Hello everyone and welcome to episode two of my new YouTube content. Uh, I really enjoyed how that prior episode went so I decided I would do some more. And today I really wanted to expand on a tweet I made I think on Friday and it was talking about the power of your environment. And the quote, the image quote was from the practice of groundedness and it discussed how the people you surround yourself with are so, so important. They affect your emotions, they affect how you feel. If you surround yourself with, with, with angry or sad or upset people, um, those bleed through to you. And also, if you surround yourself with overperformers and outperformers, you tend to outperform. If you surround yourself by underperformers, you tend to underperform. And I've read a lot of different research on this topic and it seems to permeate through just about everything. If you surround yourself with smokers, you are far more likely to smoke. If you surround yourself with drinkers or drug users, you're far, far more likely to use drugs. And vice versa, if you surround yourself with um, positive habit people, you tend to also bleed off on those in, in a good way. And so part of the reason why I want to do this YouTube content is to dive deeper into how a lot of the, this research and these theoretical concepts can apply to your day-to-day -day life. Um, so I think one way that this applies so importantly and that a lot of people tend to underestimate is the saying that you're the average of the five people you surround yourself the most with. Um, obviously, I don't think five is a magic number. It's really just the people you spend the most time with. Those tend to be the people you emulate and habits that, that affect yours, right? The difference between a person, uh, if, if, you're, if your best friend is going out drinking till 2 a.m. every night and then going late to work and not going to the gym, you're probably going to be doing some of those similar habits. If your best friend is pushing you to go on a 7 a.m. run before work, you're probably going to have much healthier habits. And I think one of the big takeaways that I've been really working on over the last few years is it's so important to reflect on your friend group. Um, what are your values and your priorities? Is that friend group and are those members close to you? Are they helping you become the person you want to be? Um, and I've seen it so often where like, not everyone needs to have everything, but there's certain friends where like, they end up where you change or your priorities and influences change and kind of it doesn't align with theirs anymore. Or there might be people in your friend group where for whatever reason they might be um, not the nicest or not the best kind of person. Um, and sometimes like you really need to decide like, is this a relationship you want in your life? Uh, I've had friends that I've had to actually like do breakup text with and the reality was like these people were not making me a better person. They were making me worse. They were sometimes um, embarrassing. They were sometimes impacting my other relationships. Um, I can think of one friend where just he would, he would get drunk and just be super um, disrespectful or embarrassing. Um, he would say just obscene things to females and even like, you know, my female friends. And it was just one of those things where it's like, you know, this guy is is not someone I want around and he doesn't help my other relationships and it's, it's I had to do the breakup. Um, there's someone else I can think about um, who's also moved since, so I don't, I don't feel too bad saying some of these things, but, um, and I think I have a pretty good eye for these things. Like, I think I'm probably, six months to a year ahead of where consensus ends up going on some of these people because I think what a lot of people fail to do is they fail to realize that how someone treats other people, even if it's not you, extrapolates to their character. And it's almost more important. Like nobody tends to really treat their friends or their, their um, you know, closest people shittily. But the question is how do they treat other people or, or new friends or new people you meet or your friends? And um, there was one person that, that, that was in our friend group and he would, he would always kind of do some, some, some shady, sketchy things that people were uncomfortable with. And there were a lot of the group that would, would justify it and say, oh, like, yeah, that wasn't so cool or that wasn't so nice. Yeah, that was kind of like a dickhead thing to do. But you know what? Um, he always treats me well. He's always good to me. Like, I, I like him. And I would always point out the flaw in that logic and say, like, look, you're only being treated well because he's just friends with you and you haven't been in that situation. But like, if you were that other person, no way you'd be friends with them. And that's more representative of who this person's character is. And so that didn't mean I wouldn't hang out with this guy or I'd be an asshole to him. It just meant like, look, you know, we're cool. We're, 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 we're boys, but I'm in no way going out of my way and uh, to, to 
invite this person or to spend time with this person. And I'm mindful that like, this is not someone I want to emulate. And over a long enough time, time rising, sure enough, he did some things that were very, very um, shitty to, to someone in our group. And it was extremely disrespectful and traumatizing. And like, people had enough and they're like, man, like, I just didn't see this. He was, he was always so nice to me. And it's like, dude, like, that's like, I've been calling this because you're looking at your specific interactions rather than looking at his character from others. And I think like the more you can surround yourself, if you look at your 23 goals, you want to say, who's going to help me reach these? Who's going to push me to be better? Like, I like to think I help my friends be healthier. I help, I like to think I help them be more ambitious, read more, broaden their horizons, do some hikes, do some travel, do some cooking or something, um, have a passion for food. Um, and like, it's so, it's so, so important to like build this right. And some friends are those drama focused friends where it's like, the same issue just repeats itself and repeats itself. And if you were to have an issue with this person and you were to ask their other friend or their other best friend, like those issues are all the same across everyone because it's just like a character flaw. And like nobody is perfect, everybody has flaws, but I think most people would do better really weighing more heavily, is this person kind, ethical, and someone I want to emulate? Um, if not, like look, everybody needs their, their, their drinking friend to grab a beer with, but like if you're playing the infinity game and really focusing on 10 years, 20 years, 50 years, like those relationships that will make you better are so priceless. And that was kind of my big lesson of 22 was really um, formulating some of those. Um, I got to meet Lucas, uh, the short pair this year, and we immediately clicked. And this is just like an ethical, smart, hardworking, down to earth, grateful dude. Um, some other, other people, um, I became closer with and you and you just share those values and you know that like being in contact with this person over 10 years and me learning and from them and me being challenged by them I'm going to be such a massively better person as a result of those relationships and those are really what I try to surround myself with like life is too short between between work between sleep uh, between going to the gym, your daily priorities and must do's, there isn't that much time out there to hang out with shitty people. Or like if you're ever hanging out with someone out of obligation, like just have that difficult combo. And again, that doesn't mean be, be an asshole, right? Like what I've been working so hard on with my performance psychologist is like having some of those uncomfortable, difficult conversations in the most productive way possible. You can, you can say something like, look, I really, uh, you know, value this friendship, the memories we've had, but it's just, it's just not conducive, um, for where I'm trying to go right now. Um, so like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just doing something else right now for this chapter. Um, and I don't think that's a mean thing to say. I don't think there's anything wrong with that life and your values change. I mean, you're only hurting yourself if you're not, um, kind of letting yourself grow and adapt. Um, and I want to be clear, like not everyone needs to be some gung ho self improvement person, but like, I do think everyone does need to be kind of kind and, and there for you. Um, is this someone that's going to help you out if you're ever down? And, and if, and again, like everyone needs those beer buddies, right? Um, I, I have a pretty large social network and I recognize some people are just there to go to a ball game, grab a beer, play a video game, go for a, a run or whatever. But some of those friends are like, they're going to be my people for life. And that's so important. Um, Another big thing that's important is when we bring this back to the trading world, I always get the question, um, why did you go prop? And ultimately, it's all because of the environment, right? In, if you start working for a prop firm right out of the gate, you're surrounded by a whole firm that's dedicated with the resources and the environment to make and help people go pro, right? You're, you're not trying to find a mentor or someone that actually is real P&L. Um, on FinTwit for two years, you're surrounded by 20, 50, 100, 150 guys that all make real P&L for you to emulate. And to tell you how important I think environment is, I really should clarify some of my, my backstory for those that don't know. Um, when I first started at Trillium, there were um, the main New York office, there was a Miami office, then the number one trader in the firm for probably like the last 10 years running or something like that was working out of a just small satellite Princeton office. I was gonna be the only person there with, with one other rookie. Um, me, my this other friend, and, and pretty much the number one trader. And 
it was almost self-selecting in a way, right? Like so many people didn't even apply for that role, which was mind boggling to me, right? Like that, my priority at that time was to become a successful trader. And I knew being in that environment to learn from the best far outweighed all the rest. And so sometimes like even, I know a lot of companies are trying to struggle with the um, remote work balance and all that. And like, for me, like if you're, if you're serious about something, um, whatever that might be, like if you want to become like, take, take LeBron, like, I think it's a little bit different going pro athlete just because of course there's the money and lower risk of, of injury. But I think regardless, like, it's kind of a no-brainer because ultimately you're just trying to elevate your craft. If that's if that's your goal, if that's your mission, you need to be around your people, right? If if I'm trying to, if if I'm trying to become a star sushi chef, the best sushi chef in the world from the middle of Idaho, it's probably not going to be as likely I succeed compared to if I do a sabbatical to Japan or something. Um, and so whether that's health, whether that's training, whether that's um, maybe you love the outdoors, maybe you love food, you want to become a better cook, maybe you want to become more mindful and just be good at meditation. How is, what is the best environment you can put yourself in? This even matters like as far as what gym you go to, right? If health is a priority, um, take something like the culture of Planet Fitness, and yes, it's a cheap gym if you need to do it, like by all means, but just for example, say like a gym that the culture is kind of like we have our pizza days, we have, uh, you know, no, no grunting, no big heavy weights. Like for me, if, if health and lifting and, and physique is, is a priority to me, I want to be in that intense gym. That's going to rise me, raise me with the tides. Like I was in Santa Monica the last month or two, and I was working out at Gold's Gym in Venice Beach, one of the most famous bodybuilding gyms, maybe the most famous ever. Why was I there? Uh, you know, so first of all, I didn't have a car, so I needed to go probably, I, I, I pretty much ran two miles there, two miles back every single day, and there were closer group workouts or different things, but I wanted to be at this historic gym, because this historic gym motivated me. They had all the pictures on the wall of all these famous bodybuilders, even, even in high school and college. There was this gym that I worked out at, which is now closed, which was called Reps in, in New Jersey. It was a gutted out warehouse. There was no air conditioning. Probably half the gym was roided up, huge Italian dudes. Um, I mean, there you had people in their 40s that were benching, you know, 400 plus pounds. It was a no-nonsense gym. You did not go there and complain about the uh, no air conditioning. You did not go there and ask, where is the steam room? You did not go there and ask, uh, why is this gym so dirty? You went there because you wanted to be surrounded with lifters that knew what they were doing and did not mess around. And as a result, you were going to lift harder. And so I would urge you all to think like, what is the environment in 23 that will elevate you? A lot, for a lot of people, that's finding the right pod. Um, let's see. So one other thing that I was asked is, um, you know, how does one build discipline sometimes? And, and like, I really think there's, there's two ways. Like this person was asking, are you just born with it? And I would say discipline is, is what appears to be two things. One, I think part of it is a muscle that you flex, right? You build discipline by doing it every single day. Um, it starts small, like, like, like you would at the gym for any muscle, but it builds up over time. And the more disciplined you live, the more you're able to stretch that muscle. Then the other thing I would say is discipline is also environmental controls, right? And so the same way surrounding yourself with, with good people, you can also surround yourself in an environment that facilitates whatever you want to do. So like, if you were to check out my apartment, I have no snack food in this apartment. The only foods I have are lean proteins, veggies, water and soda water, right? That's, that's it. There's no snacks. There's no desserts. There's no cookies. There's no, uh, pop tarts. There's no cheese. It's, there's nothing. Right. Um, and that's because it allows me to never really kind of cheat if I get hungry, right? The options are, well, too bad, uh, you know, have something healthier or, or just don't eat. And the other thing is if you were to walk out my main door, right by the door, when you enter and exit, you pretty much trip over a rucksack a rucksack with a bunch of weight in it. And so what does that mean? Every single time I go out for errands, 
it means it's gonna be it's just so easy that I trip over this thing where I might as well put on this rucksack and get like a decent workout if I'm gonna be walking to get groceries or walking to get the mail or whatever. Um, and I think like the more you can structure your environment to facilitate all this, the better, right? We talk about putting your goals in your calendar. Um, if you have 2023 goals that you can book and commit to right now, like it's scary to put your credit card down and say, I'm going to do this this year, especially so early. But that's that's the most powerful thing because you're this is the time of year when your calendar is wide open. What are the must do things you need to do? Just throw them on there and block it off. Um, we talk about even um, the environment as far as distractions, right? The more you can avoid stuff like like the social media, the phone distractions, your productivity and everything will go so far up. And so I think like the really big thing I want people reflecting on is like, how can you better design and construct your environment of people? How can you design and construct your workplace? How can you um, even control your, your bedroom for good sleep? How can you control your kitchen for healthy eating? How can you really design this, this world around you? Um, off Amazon, you know, you can get a really cheap exercise bike. So if you were to look in front of my, my projector, I have a massive, awesome TV, but I also have my little exercise bike in front of it. So if I'm going to be watching like a couple hours of TV, you can get like a little cardio in. And that's not to say I'm like super gung ho crazy about this stuff, but I think with all this stuff, if you're good about it 80% of the time, right? Like if you're getting good sleep, 80% of the time and really focused on that, you're, go you're going to be healthy. If you're going to the gym and getting a really great workout 80% of the time, it's going to be great. If you're eating healthy, if you're putting the work in 80% of the time, it's going to happen. And so really that big reflection for you all is like, what are the different ways you can, you can kind of control that environment? And um, hope these examples helped. I don't want it to go on too long. And uh, so yeah, wish you the best and uh, let me know if any questions.